How's it going, my lovely Death Disciples? One moment, we're on the wrong side of the map here. So, hello, I am the Shattered Reaper, and today we are going to be showing an epic video of League of Legends where I play as somebody a bit different. Uh, in this video, we've got our pairing of Zaya and Rakan with me playing as Zaya the Rebel. And Rakan, well, I mean, he, he selected Rakan first as support, and it was just like, oh shit. I'm gonna have to pick Zaya, and I'm not entirely confident with her, even though I have been practicing as her for a bit, but you know what? <laughs> Screw it! Uh, we, uh, love will be able to help us persevere in this time, and I'm certain that is exactly what will happen. And uh, it, I, I do honestly have to say that Zaya and Rakan are definitely the cutest couple in League of Legends. Like, Zaya X Rakan, I fully support. It is just absolutely amazing. Here, Rakan and I are simply just waiting in the bottom while uh, we have the uh, rest of the team sort of just uh, helping with the um, Kha'Zix and invading the enemy's red buff, uh, while the enemy, uh, Jin and Warwick, apparently <sighs> are in that? our own bottom not jungle. <clears throat> But, uh, you know, luckily we're not in that jungle, <laughs> and we can just go ahead and focus on the bottom lane while the rest of the team is focusing on helping Kha'Zix with the red buff. But, uh, their bottom is not necessarily, uh, at position, so, uh, we get to have free reign with these minions. And, of course, I, uh, don't necessarily do my best at the farming for the first moment, but you know what? It works out. And, uh, yes. Yeah. Zai is a very interesting hero that I really enjoyed a lot. I kind of really like her kit. I like her abilities and her power, so I, I definitely grew an interest in seeing her, especially from the uh, cinematics that I got to see. Um, so uh, the first ability I decided to go with was the double dagger. Zaya throws two daggers, dealing 54 physical damage each, and leaving two feathered targets hit after the first take 27 damage from each dagger. So, it is a very awesome ability to have. You can only have this as well as the Deadly Plumage to upgrade. Um, the Deadly Plumage, which uh, creates a Storm Blaze for 4 seconds. And here comes the first kill, and it was by Hubby Rakan. So, great work, darling. You know just how to uh, get things started, even though that first kill probably should have been me if we're going by lore standards. But, uh, you know. Sometimes it's nice to have a few changes. Especially since Rakan is definitely getting a bit aggressive there, while I've just been focusing on the farming. We both get hit by Senna's, um, a hook or root, um, and Rakan is looking a little bit beaten up, so I decide to use my heal, so kind of a switch of roles a little bit. Um, but I am going up against Vayne a little bit and Senna, taking them both on. I use my E in order to recall my daggers and damage the enemies along the way. The E, uh, which is Blake Collar, Zaya calls all feathers back to her, dealing 66 physical damage, each increased by 0%, hit 3 more feathers, and I get my first kill against Vayne. So Vayne, not having a fun time, unfortunately. Warwick, however, is coming our way in the bottom, and he goes after Rakan, and I try to save him. Unfortunately, Rakan it was kind of doomed to fall, and I did get rooted, I used my abilities, and then I recall my feathers to finish off Senna, and even though I have been killed by Warwick, the turret does finish him off, thus giving me an amazing double kill, so things are starting off pretty well for me. Now, I have been a little bit distracted by the uh, action that's going on in the uh, game, and I unfortunately was not able to finish reading uh, the W. Deadly Plumage, Zaya creates a Storm Blades for four seconds that grants her 35% attack speed and causes her attacks to fire a secondary blade that deals 20% damage. When the secondary blade hits a champion, she grants herself 30% movement speed for 1.5 seconds. If Rakan is nearby, he will also gain the effects of this ability, except he gains movement speed when Zaya strikes a target. So, uh, definitely something that really helps. There is absolutely a reason as to why Rakan and Zaya are just a dream team. They are always powerful together, and um, it's just, if you're gonna have Rakan, it's best to have a Zaya, and if you're gonna have a Zaya, it's best to have a Rakan. But, you know, only if you guys actually know what you're doing with uh, the characters that you are planning on playing, but, you know, 
Having a Zaya and a Rakan is a very powerful thing to have. They are an absolute power couple house. It, it, that was said not it, that was said wrong, but oh well. Anyway, so yeah, I am taking advantage by taking a few pokes with my double daggers as well as my blade recall. Just making sure that uh, they know that when they're stepping in the wrong place, I'm always gonna be ready. So I use my double dagger to hit both Senna and Vayne. And they are definitely not having a fun time, but uh, I am also getting very harassed by Vayne, and it's not very fun for me. And uh, Vayne does shut me down, but I recall my blades just in time to finish off Senna, so uh, sorry Vayne, but your friend just kind of died there. Or I mean, uh, sorry Vayne, uh, wait, did I say Vayne or Senna? Eh, whatever. I did kill someone before I died anyway, so you know, it works. Putting me at a carry rate of four kills, two deaths, and one assist, although Darius does have three kills, no deaths, so uh, he, he is kind of doing slightly better in the fact that he hasn't died a single time, and he does also have more minion kills, so trade-off, I suppose. And, of course, I do also have the culling to start off, and I only have 22 kills so far to go for it, so I have to kill 78 more minions in order to finish it off. I also have the pickaxe, the cloak of agility so far, and a longsword to move up to the noon quiver. And of course, why not just have a pair of boots and a health potion. Warwick trying to gank us from the jungle. I use all of my abilities upon him, and he definitely, he definitely just was not ready for what Rakan and I had ready for him. So the power couple just absolutely raging in here. That was not the right word, and that definitely made me sound out of touch, didn't it? Um, uh, well, ignoring that, uh, we are definitely pushing in, uh, against the- against bottom, and since Warwick is nowhere nearby, uh, because I killed him, it's definitely something I can take advantage of, uh, for a little bit. And I am definitely focusing on Vayne, absolutely going ham on her, even though Senna is firing after me. And uh, I did get ignited by her, but I did get Vayne in revenge for her killing me earlier. Just because I killed her dear friend, Senna. Who, which, by the way, I do love you, Senna. I'm sorry I had to kill you. I'm sorry we have to fight each other, but you know. Anyway, so, uh, both me and Rakan decide to back together, which is a passive thing that we get to have. I don't know if we can necessarily see it, but, uh, yeah, it is, a, it is a passive that we can have, like, whenever one of us recalls, we can join in that recall, and we can just recall back together at the same time. And, uh, by the way, in case you were looking at my abilities, I am leveling up my blade color because that is one of the most effective abilities. Um, I don't think I read the entire description, so, Zaya calls her feathers back to her dealing 128 physical damage at level 3. Each increase by 8%. If three or more feathers hit an enemy, they are rooted for 1.25 seconds. So definitely very effective when you have more than enough feathers to have to recall to you, and the enemy just so happens to be standing in the wrong spot. So uh, yeah, very useful ability to level up. I mean, I did make the mistake of leveling up my double daggers first, but uh, that was definitely not the right thing to do, obviously. Vayne is definitely going after me, though, um, but, uh, Rakan is there to protect me, and, uh, oh, do we have a lot of minions to collect here, to which, obviously, I take full advantage of, because, oh, the feed, the gold, the experience, it's just right there. How do you expect me not to enjoy this? And Rakan takes the cannon, but, you know, I benefit from the gold as well, so I'm not too unhappy about it. A Warwick comes in trying to ruin the fun, and I try to call my double daggers against him, but, uh, it doesn't necessarily hit him, which, uh, I'm kind of sad about. But, oh well. It is what it is. Rakan going in after Vayne and I try to follow up, and I use my ultimate to kill him, and Rakan gets the final hit, but you know what. I, I, I but, you know, I mean, at least she's dead. And that works for me. Oh, there's the, uh, passive, uh, that I didn't get to read. Rakan is definitely going fully committed in there, and he does die to Warwick, but to make up for the fact that he did die, I went after, um, I went after Senna, but Warwick does get his revenge on me by killing me with turret, just like I did with him earlier in the game. But you know what? We still got Senna, and, uh, we, we just kinda got a little bit careless. Uh, so, uh, yeah, 
I feel like Rakan's carelessness and uh, thoughtless uh, going in for the fight is rubbing off on me a little. Anyway, so I did not read the passive, so let's me go, let me go ahead and read that while we have a moment to breathe. After using an ability, Zaya's next three attacks will deal 30% damage to all other targets along their path and leave a feather for six seconds. And then there's also Lover's Leap, Zaya and Rakan can recall together, as you saw earlier. So that's basically her kit. And then there's also her alt, which you saw earlier, the Feather Storm. Zaya leaps into the air, becoming untargetable and ghosted for 1.5 seconds before raining down daggers that deal 208 physical damage and leave behind a line of feathers, which can be very effective for the, for the uh, feather recall, obviously, because there's a bunch of feathers that are left behind and, uh, you know, pretty perfect to just use if I do say so myself. Now then, um, I'm simply just trying to, uh, recover from the, uh, damage that I took earlier, and, uh, oops, got hit by the root, and Vayne is definitely wanting to take advantage of it, but Rakan, he takes the hit for me, or at least it looked like he did, and, uh, Rakan goes in to try and knock some people up, uh, I get rooted instead, and then I get ulted down by Senna, and, uh, Kha'Zix, well, that wasn't necessarily the best game he was made, honestly. And, uh, yeah. Darius was very close to getting I.O. Uh, it, however her name is pronounced. The uh, point of the matter is it did not necessarily, uh, uh, that it did not necessarily work out for, um, Kha'Zix or Darius. Um, but, let's go ahead and take a look at the items that we have so far. So we still haven't quite, uh, oh no, wait, I'm looking at the wrong thing. Um... So we do have Gale Force, which Killing if I actually actively use it, which unfortunately I don't in this match because it's difficult for me to do that, it gives me 60 attack damage, 20% attack speed, and 20% critical strike chance. Uh, the active Cloud Burst dash in target direction, firing three missiles at the lowest health enemy near your destination, prioritizing champions, deals a total 217 magic damage, increase against low health targets. Uh, here we are facing off against Senna though. And, uh, unfortunately, uh, we aren't able to get her, so we kind of just call it a draw and just go our separate ways while I just go ahead and farm while she runs off a little bit. Uh, I'm simply just waiting for Rakan because I don't necessarily want to go in against the enemy without any support at the moment, so I just wait around for him. Put up a little ward in our jungle just so that we could be aware of any ganks that come through that direction. Kill a minion, and Senna tries to escape, but I shut her down with my feathers. And, uh, it was all thanks to the power of love. Maybe it would have helped a little bit more if you had Lucy and Senna, but unfortunately, you don't. So, uh, yeah, you, you kind of don't have the power of love on your side. Unfortunately. Uh, so, sorry about that, girl. No hard feelings. But, you know. At the same time, Shut down. you have been, you did, you have killed me a couple of times, and there are some hard feelings there. Uh, anyway, I am following Rakan because you know Turn we we can't possibly be separated. That's that's just the power of love. And uh, then I go in and get a final hit from Warwick, even though Ash and Rakan had been beating up uh, Warwick the entire time. But then I just come in and throw a dagger at him to finish him off, <laughs> which. As I looked at it, it was kind of a bit of a bitch move, uh, but after that I just kind of make up for it by, uh, by, uh, damaging the tower a little bit, and, uh, probably could have stuck around for one more hit on the tower so that we could have gotten that gold bonus, but, uh, oh well. Anyway, so, uh, we are heavily pushing in on the mid lane. And, uh, Jin and Senna are trying to hold us off. And, uh, even though things are at a bit of a stalemate, I decide to just head back in the direction of the bottom because there seems to be good feed. And, oh, would you look at that? There's also the Infernal Drake that is also alive. But then Warwick just feels like maybe causing a little bit of a standoff himself. And, uh, I'm not too keen on that. But Rakan and I decide to, uh, eventually just go back into mid lane because uh, it looks like the mid lane is just pushing in without us. So, uh, yeah, we, we decide to help out and Rakan actually gets Jin, so, uh, very nice work, hubby. You're learning from my influence how to kill people. Uh, it's lovely. It really is. Anyway, so, uh, Kha'Zix 
gets um the uh the scuttle beetle thing. And uh, we decide to go ahead and we get the dragon using my abilities, and we get the infernal break, thus giving us some extra damage uh, by about 4% attack damage and ability power. So, uh, considering my character, I think that really works for me. But then we notice that shit's going down in the bottom lane, and even though we get rid of the Herald of the Rift, uh, the turret is gone, but I avenge it by killing Warwick. So, uh, yeah, things are a little bit dire now in the bottom lane. Uh, so now I decide to go full ham and just push the wave. That's just what I'm gonna do, and we're gonna make sure that we're not the only ones that lost a turret. The next one is gonna be the enemy's bottom turret, and we're gonna make absolute certain of it. However, Senna kinda wants to act like, uh, we don't have a reason to take her turret down, but, uh, I think we kinda do. And I'm, I let her know that by using my double daggers, my feather storm, as uh, she doesn't necessarily die though, which surprises me. Uh, Rakan is killed by Vayne, and so I go in to avenge Rakan by murdering Vayne. Uh, Jin is now going after me, and I use my uh, feather recall, but unfortunately Jin does shut me down, so that was a little bit disappointing. But at the very least, I did die, uh, I did avenge Rakan before dying, so that's something at least. And, uh, then, as we go further along, uh, let's go ahead and check our build now. So now we have the Berserker Greaves, and we also have the Essence Reaper, which gives me 45 attack damage, 20% critical strike chance, and 20 ability haste, which also- and also the passive ability, Spellblade. After using an ability, your next attack deals 138 physical damage, bonus damage on hit, and restores 55 mana. So, uh, definitely very useful to have, and as you can tell, I have my Feather Recall at- or my Blade Caller at, uh, full level, with my Double Daggers at, uh, second level, so very helpful for me. And, uh, let me see if it, um, okay, so yeah, I have some extra critical strike chance thanks to the crit items that I have built thus far. And, uh, let's see, does, uh, I, yeah, I still have the critical, uh, strike and it is at 40%. I was wondering because of the essence we were saying on hit, and, uh, sometimes I remember that the critical strike... Uh, well, anyway, that doesn't quite matter at this point. Um, anyway, so, uh, we are pushing in the wave at the moment. Rakan gets the cannon, and, uh, we both work together to push the farm, but then suddenly, there's a bit of a problem in bottom jungle. And, uh, I'm definitely trying to deal with things with the double daggers, and, um, I am trying my absolute hardest, but, um, even though I've dealt a bunch of damage, uh, both me and Rakan do fall in that area. Darius, however, does bring down the top tower, so very good job on his end, at the very least. And, uh, let's see, yeah, it's gonna be a bit of a while before I get respawned, so, uh, let's just watch Darius, who actually did a very excellent job throughout this match, uh, just work his magic on the second turret while we wait for me to come back to life. And, oh, it looks like Jin is not too happy about him, uh, pushing that tower, or the turret. And, uh, I was about to leave for mid lane immediately, but then I remembered I should probably buy some items with the gold that I had. And, uh, I bought a couple of daggers, I mean, fitting, considering my ability consists of daggers. And, uh, but mid lane is definitely getting pushed in. I still have not finished the calling, though, so, uh, that's a little bit awkward. I push in the, uh, the wave, and, uh, Ash kills Senna, then we go after Warwick, Kaza gets him, and then we continue to pressure the mid lane with Jin hiding behind the turret. Meanwhile, I, I decide if he's gonna hide behind the turret, I'm gonna go ahead and break it, although I do get rooted by Jin's ability. And yeah, I get credit for destroying the turret because, you know, I'm amazing. It's just what I do. And uh, I decide that I need to back because the bottom lane is getting pushed, so I decide to go ahead and return back to base so that I can get closer to Vayne, who is trying to act like she's so important, but uh, then she also kind of recalls herself, so well played. And uh, from there, I decide to go Red ahead, I'm gonna push destroyed. bottom lane because it has been pushed back itself, so I should probably go ahead and take care of that. Shut down. 
Darius shuts down Jean, and I go ahead and go towards the uh, bottom lane and the bottom jungle because things are going on. Kha'Zix is being chased by Warwick, and we see Ilio, uh, in, in whatever her name is, I don't know how to pronounce it, and uh, we kill her. Uh, Rakan kills her, though. He, he seems to have an act for stealing my kills. <laughs> Uh, but, you know, shared credit. Uh, but, um, things don't necessarily go to plan because Warwick does kill me. And, uh, that doesn't really work out well for us. Warwick then also kills Rakan, and, um... I I'm not exactly sure how I can ex explain that part, though. I don't really know how I can explain that part, because it just seems, kind of seems a little bit odd how Ash just... Sort of died there. I don't know. I feel like either she should have just committed to running, or should have just. I, I I don't really know what she could have done better. It just felt odd. Anyway, so I'm back, and uh, I have not been having a good recent fun time. And uh, we can probably tell from my record that uh, I I do still have a positive record, but lately I've been dying a lot, and uh, I kind of need to fix that problem a little bit. I upgraded one of my daggers to a Curtius Shard, which gives me 15% attack speed and Energize. Moving and attacking will generate an Energize attack. Jolt, Energize attacks gain additional 80 magic damage. So we are now waiting in the uh, bottom jungle. Uh, Warwick is there and so are a bunch of enemies. I completely focus on Warwick as Warwick is facing off against Rakan. Ash misses her ult and I was a little bit confused about that. Kha'Zix shuts down Warwick though, so nice job on him. Jin decides to run off by using one of the exploding fruits. Meanwhile, Senna's just kind of left her fate where I get my revenge if I get my bloodthirst satisfied. Uh, the bottom turret gets taken down uh, for the enemy, so very nice for us. And I decide to follow Kha'Zix a little bit because I do happen to see Jin over there and I kind of want to kind of want to mess him up a little bit, you know? Uh, Bucky, once again, hides behind turret, so I decide to go ahead and break said turret again. Because if you're gonna go ahead and just hide behind turret, don't mind if I go ahead and just break it down. And, uh, I take, and I take it down, and I go after Gene, and I kill him first, but Gene then also finishes me off with his ability. So, even though we had a shared blow, at the same time, I did take care of that turret, so I kind of ended up with a more beneficial trade, if I'm being perfectly honest. Rakan is just messing around with Ilioi, and um, he's just he's just harassing her a little bit. Meanwhile, Kha'Zix comes in from behind, and then both he and Rakan just, uh, well, they, they could have had it earlier, but, um, but then they just kind of separated. Uh, Rakan is still alive, however, but, uh, Darius is the one that kind of finishes, um, uh, Ilioi off. But again, I feel like they kind of could have just finished Ilioi off earlier if they just kept basic attacking her, but then they just kind of split off for some reason. I have no idea why, but they did. Um, so yeah. Anyway, so now, uh, my record is at 13 kills, 8 deaths, and 6 assists. So, uh, oh, but then I see a vein over there, and I decide I need to finish off this wave so that I can catch up with her. But, uh, unfortunately, I get too distracted by minions, and, uh, just fin focus more on finishing them off instead. I don't get the cannon and the, uh, last mage minion, though. Uh, but, uh, I do happen to see that most of my allies are up in the top. I do also know that there is eventually going to be a, uh... Drake coming in, but then I see Vayne return, and I decide why not mess with her a little bit more, send my double daggers, and even though she does send me against the wall, I recall my blade feathers, and, uh, that kills her. So, uh, you know, uh, just, just another lesson for Vayne, it's like, don't mess with Zaya, and, uh, probably don't stand in the same position as I am throwing daggers behind you that could penetrate your flesh, as I recall them, especially when I have the ability to recall said tackers. Um, so yeah, word of the wise. And so then I decide to go ahead and push minion waiver. Khan is definitely going behind her, and this time I decide to follow him and go after Jin and finish him off for a nice little bit of revenge. Recall my blade fe feathers so that I can, um, get some minions and harass the enemy a little bit. 
Uh, Ilioi, however, is a little, is a little bit tanky, uh, tanky, sorry, but I do get my blade free call on her, and then I kill her eventually while after missing my ult, so that wasn't necessarily my best moment. Um, I try to go after Vayne, but she runs off, uh, so I just kind of help with Warwick instead. Um, and then also continue pushing lane. I definitely was tempted to go after Vayne, but I didn't know what she was going to be bringing. I do eventually see her, but Kha'Zix eventually kills her instead, but, you know, even though my rival died, I'm willing to let somebody else have it when I'm not there. Uh, Rakan and, uh, 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 Darius go to kill Senna, meanwhile I'm just focusing on the turret so that I can break it down and leave nothing behind. <laughs> I destroy the turret, and even though I was gonna go for, uh, the inhibitor, I instead go after Jin because, you know, he's more of a valued prize in my eyes, because, you know, he's one of the rivals and one of the squishy damage people, so I wanted to go after him a little bit. And, uh, after taking down the inhibitor, I decide to join Rakan in recalling a little bit in our lover's leap. And it is in that moment that we go ahead and do a little bit of shopping after a nice little moment of murder. And uh, from it we get the Rapid Firearms, which, um, if I have not explained before, gives 35% attack speed, 20% critical strike chance, 7% movement speed, uh, gives the energized attack, but most importantly it also gives the sharpshooter. Your energized attack applies 120 bonus magic damage. In addition, energized attacks gain 150 bonus attack range. So it's very nice to have for much longer starting attacks. Or, you know, if you've been chasing an enemy for a while, you also have some extra range to work with just in case uh, you happen to just get in range of the enemy, or, I don't know, I feel like it would have to take a while for that to happen, but, you know. Elioi dies in the, uh, top lane, which I was going to help out with, but she already died, uh, so instead we go into the top river, to which Rakan has captured Senna, and I just had to give him a little help with that, so I murder Senna by throwing a few daggers at her. Recall my blades, but Warwick jumps out of the way just in time, but it's not enough because I kill him anyway for a nice double kill. Meanwhile, I am busy now handling the entire army of the minions, or just the wave of minions, which, I mean, isn't that much, but, you know, it's a moment to make me feel a little badass, because, you know, a bunch of enemies, one person, why not feel a little important? Even though they are champions, though. But I do happen to see Jin while everybody else is attacking the uh, Baron Nator, and I probably should have been there, but at the same time... I kinda wanted to mess around with Jin a little bit, so I follow him, just to make sure he isn't getting any trouble going on, and he did try to cause some trouble, um, but it wasn't quite enough, and instead I just kill him with my blade recall, I think, and then just for fun I decide to go and take some of the jungle in the, uh, enemy's top lane, because why not? I mean, gold, experience, it's just there. And uh, then, even though there are enemies in the bottom lane, I decide to first things first just go ahead and steal the enemy's red buff as well while I'm at it, just to mess with Warwick a little bit and just take something that I desire, along with taking his raptors or what's left of them, because uh, the big one wasn't there. However, I also see Senna there, and uh, I decide to pay send her a little bit of a high in the form of a couple of feather daggers. Um, but then she just kind of runs off for some reason, and I can't quite understand as to why that is, but Ilio is willing to say hi. Um, it, it just so happens to be that she kills me. So, um, yeah, that didn't quite work as well as I thought it would. Anyway, Kha'Zix is not having a fun time in that moment. Rakan gives the shield to Kha'Zix so that he can escape, uh, but Kha'Zix returns and, uh, he, he kind of dies as he's trying to help out with Warwick, and unfortunately Rakan also dies. So that doesn't necessarily work out for the both of them. Darius, however, really gone after uh, Vayne with Ash's help, and he is just absolutely going ham on her. Oh, and this is a really good moment. I am so... Uh, and uh, Warwick is taken down by Darius. Darius just goes through a stream of ultimates upon the enemy team for a quadra kill. And then there is Senna. He explodes the fruits so that he can get closer. Oh, wait, 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 wait. hold on. We need, we need to pause. And then we need to look through uh, Darius's perspective because this is so amazing. We, we definitely. Where is he? 
Oh wait, wrong team. Um, Darius. Right, I was looking in the wrong section. And uh, here, Darius is just absolutely not holding back, just chasing after Paul Senna in, and then goes for the fucking pentakill. Holy shit, that is just amazing. Now back to me, as uh, we are now going through mid lane to go ahead and try to finish off the enemy, but um, I'm not going to do anything else that's important, and instead we're going- oh, wrong character. Uh, Darius is at the top right. Darius is now just going to be finishing off the uh, enemy's um, the enemy's uh, nexus. Uh, he's not going to deal the final blow though. He's just going to be facing off against the enemy's champion just for a little bit of extra fun. Meanwhile, I just arrived and Jin was about to use his ult, but the nexus already died. Minions, and that's how the match ends. And I uh, yeah. Anyway, so um, oops. Uh, I should probably, um, I'm gonna go ahead and quickly just then, uh, set the, um, set OBS on, uh, screen capture, so that we can check on a few things, um, and, uh, there we go, that should work, and, uh, we're gonna go ahead and conclude that victory, and, uh, then, I, I completely forgot to turn off Discord, I apologize, um, and then, uh, we're also gonna go ahead and take a look at the, um, the runes that I used for, um, it was Loic Shadow Dance. Uh, so yes, Kane is no longer up there with the Hail Blades because, uh, Wild Hunt of Kurnos ended up proving more effective for, um, for, uh, Caitlyn. Uh, Loic Shadow Dance, however, I specifically built for Zaya, and with it I have Precision, uh, become a legend, improved attacks and sustained damage, and I get the lethal tempo. 1.5 seconds after damaging a champion, gain a large amount of attack speed. Lethal tempo allows you to uh, temporarily exceed the attack speed limit. Then I also have presence of mind, increase your mana or energy regeneration when damaging an enemy champion. Uh, takedowns. Um, hold on. Uh, it actually. Takedowns restore 15% of your maximum mana or energy. Legend Bloodline gain 0.6% lifesteal for every legend stack, max 15 stacks. Earn progress towards legend stacks for every champion takedown, epic monster takedown, large monster kill, and minion kill, which I, I, obviously, as you could see, I was able to do quite a bit. And then there is the coup de grace. Deal 8% more damage to champions who have less than 40% health. So, very, very effective for those finishing attacks. And then I also have for the secondary sorcery, unleashed destruction, empowered abilities, and resource manipulation. So I have the Nimbus Cloak, after casting a summoner spell, gain a short move speed increase that allows you to pass through units, increases 5% to 35% move speed based on the summoner spell cooldown. High cooldown summer spell, summoner spells grant more movement speed, Gather then I also have the Gathering Storm. Every 10 minutes gain AP or AD adaptive. So for 10 minutes I get 8 AP, uh, AP or 5 AD. Well, ability power or attack damage. 20 minutes, uh, 24 ability power or 14 attack damage. 30 minutes, 48 AP or 29 AD. 40 minutes, uh, 80 AP or 48 AD. 50 minutes, etc, etc, you see the list as it goes on. And then, of course, I have the Offense, plus 9 Adaptive Force, plus 9 Adaptive Force for Flex, and for Defense, plus 6 Armor. So, yeah, that is the, uh, that is Loic Shadow Dance that I use for this room build, and that is pretty much it for this video. So I hope y'all enjoyed this video, and this match as a Zaya, the, as Zaya the Rebel. And, uh, yeah, that'll be all for today, so I hope y'all enjoyed this video. Give that like button a star if you did. Subscribe if you want more death in your life. Be sure the bell is tolling for the until next time. Rest in peace. Bye! Enjoyed today's video? Well, there's plenty more for you to enjoy here. And if you also want to support this small channel, then there is also my ko which is available, as well as a Twitter thread that gives you my commissioning info. And if you'd like some traditional art or literature, feel free to DM me on Twitter. Thank you for enjoying the video and for your viewership.